Hello everyone and welcome. Uh, I just want to do a little quick review and tutorial over the Windows side of this little laptop, the Latitude 2120. And kind of show you what it's got on it. Uh, basically I'm going to start with the, what I think is the most important thing. And uh, we'll go over here to the Explorer, open it up and go to Documents. This is basically going to have a file on here that I think is really important. And I made this license key little file that's got the computer ID for the network as 5 2110. And the Windows key is right there, so your Windows license key is always up to date and accurate right there. It's also got a sticker on the bottom of this laptop. So, uh, if it ever gets wiped off or so old and rubbed off that you can't see it, we've got it right here. This Dell service tag number is a uh, a non-warranty item, but you can get some support and drivers and data and uh, input from their knowledge base by that number for this this particular machine. Okay, uh, the Windows license key, the dual boot. Um, this has Linux Mint 17.3 uh, and Windows 7. Windows 7, um, it's a 32 bit, and when you install programs, you got to make sure that you use 32 bit because 64 bit programs won't work. Uh, this is a 64 bit capable machine, but because of performance and uh, because it's kind of lacking on resources, it slows things down a lot. So basically, we've got Windows 7. I believe it's called uh, Start the Starter uh, version, and that's because we don't have a DVD, and this is just what they call a uh, a web book or a net book. So it doesn't have a DVD and a lot of things that we don't need to be running in the background. So it kind of saves on a lot of resources to help keep things running a little bit faster. Okay, so that's that. And as you notice, I put that in a folder that says do not delete. Okay, so we want to make sure that uh, we pay attention to that. So there it is right there. Also in here I've got uh, your eSword folder. There's a program we'll look at and uh, some of your notes and stuff will be saved here. YRM lessons, we'll look at that. The Basura of Yahusha. Easy uh, BCD backup. Um, that's kind of a backup for the dual boot, and uh, we'll look at that. Uh, basically, what it is, it's a redundant boot setup. And uh, if you were to say, for example, damage the boot log, excuse me, on Linux, then uh, we have a backup, and I'll show you that on the desktop here. And there's a little test document that I did right there. I believe I could probably just take that and delete it right now. Uh, undo delete. I don't understand that. Hmm. Well, anyway, I wanted to show that to you. And, uh, a couple of other things we have on the bottom down here is uh, Windows 7 Zip, an invaluable tool for unzipping all kinds of different formats uh, from uh, zip files to uh, other compression. And uh, this is basically our Word document. Uh, to try to save a bunch of money on some office software in the suite and things like that, you know, this would allow us to be able to uh, write documents and save things. If uh, we were wanting to do things a little bit more in depth and save it online, uh, holler at me. Uh, Google Drive is a great resource. Uh, we got Microsoft Paint. We got the the media player, the little microphone. So if you want to save a recording on the sound recorder right there, a calculator. We've got Firefox, Chrome. We've got eSword and the Interlinear Scriptures Analyzer, which this program is primarily the reason that I have uh, Windows even on this computer because I'm kind of a Linux guy but I wanted to show this to you real quick and that uh, 
you go over here and you click on say Old Testament and go to my favorite verse which is Zephaniah uh, 3 and verse 9 which basically gives us the first three steps or the first three things that the Father would have us to do to be able to become Echad or one with him and to receive of his power, his protection, strength and provision. So basically what happens here in this is what's huge. You can use this to let scripture define scripture and not necessarily by uh, what you might call the Strongs, which is deeply rooted in the Catholic faith. Uh, these people are not Torah scholars. What they are is they're uh, Catholic universities of New York City, and I don't even get my salsa from New York City. So basically what happens here is, uh, say for example, the Father's name. Now they've got it. Uh, transliterated down there as Yahweh and uh, I have some proof that I'll show you later that kind of says Yahuwah. I go by Yahuwah and I have really good reasons and resources to back that up. So we we'll click on that with a, the little mouse pad up here and then I go up there to that one and I click on it and it pops up to this little search um, window and you've got where you can type in different letters up here and they're the ones that are wrapped around or right there. So it's got all of them. You can type it in right down here. It's where you type it in and you need to do a search. And then when you click on search, it pops up down here every place in Torah where it would have that particular instance. And this way, by taking a look at it, you can use different instances throughout Torah to help you get a better understanding of what the word means instead of listening to uh, religious uh, zealots of, say, an, an alien traditional faith <laughs> or an alien religion. I don't know. I'm just trying to get back to basics. The Father said he's going to give us his pure language, his pure lip. Here it is, in the purest form that we have available to us today. So this is a great resource. Uh, you're going to learn as you get into this, and this is primarily for the scholars. It's not necessarily the scribe or the elementary school or kindergarten. We've got some stuff in there for that too. So this is basically where you're headed, to be able to read the Father's language and to understand it in uh, the best form that we have and this is basically compared to the uh, the stone edition of the Torah of the Tanakh which is supposed to be accurate to the very word now I know a lot of people will say well I wished it was in the paleo but the paleo as compared to the Babylonian script is just a difference in a font say for example if you used uh, courier and uh, aerial or something like that it's the same difference so word for word and letter for letter they mean exactly the same so you can relax and all that stuff so there it is this is huge it's a tremendous asset uh, it's one of the things that I really really enjoy because I have learned so much and this is one of the things that I'm trying to get out there to try to help people to understand the father's truth so they can have his power and strength and share it with others Okay, so that's that. We're kind of going backwards here. So now the next thing, this pops up there and just disregard it. It's a little glitch. And the next thing that we have along those same lines is uh, eSword. Now some of you probably used eSword. It's a pretty good resource, kind of in the middle uh, between what you might call your Bible and actually getting into the Torah. So basically when it pops up here, it's a uh, pretty in-depth and powerful program as well so it takes a while to load and it gives you a couple little helpful tips right there and you just click OK and take that away now over on the left we've got the books and you can scroll up and down over here and we're on Zephaniah again you can see it Zephaniah 3 and go down to my favorite one uh, nine right here and he's going to turn the people to his pure language because in Genesis it said everybody was of the same language the same tongue so I think everybody would include even the father Yahuwah so we need to get back to his language to be able to understand him as he is instead of through the eyes the interpretation or the traditions of uh, alien influences so 
what's really neat about this as you see at the top here this is a King James Plus so it's got the Strong's numbers right next to it now if I clip on the scriptures 98 you'll notice that when we look at this and if I scroll down here where well, you can see it right there that uh, the father's name is not transliterated they actually have it written in there um, they I just like it because it's not necessarily from uh, say a, a Catholic or uh, that type of uh, influence in translation it's a, a little bit more legit you might say so it's kind of in between what you might call the, the Catholic influences and the Torah so it's a pretty good stepping stone so basically you can do searches also on this so if I go up here and I click on Bible and I go down to search we get this window that pops up and if I type in say a Strong's number of H3467 and I go over here and I kick on, on the King James Plus and then the monoculars it's gonna pop up uh, every instance of the 3467 and I chose that for a reason because it says saved saved okay everywhere it says saved okay but I thought that the common understanding or the the common uh, way of thinking was that Yeshua meant salvation or saved um, there's a lot of error in that so I clicked on Exodus 20 and I did that for a reason I'm gonna cancel this and we go up here to Exodus well, I thought I was let me go over here and click on King James Plus and stood in water it was 20 we go down here to 20 and H3467 no well, I could do it down here too. I wanted to show you basically this age 3467. It comes up there and it says Yasha. And if you think about Yahusha, is the way that I say the son's name. And if you think about actually the way that Isaiah's name is said, is um, Yasha Yahu, which is kind of like the same thing. You might call it syllables inverted. Which, uh, what does it mean? But what does it mean? What does it mean? Okay, so it means to actually to free or to succor um, all avenging, a defender, a deliverer, to help preserve, to rescue, to be safe and bring having salvation. Okay, so Yahusha, I think there's a lot of good study there. So I wanted to show you this too. Uh, there's a concordance here, cross-reference. Uh, you can do journal notes, study notes, topical notes. It's even got some maps that you can download. So I'm going to go ahead and jump out of this real quick because we've got a lot to cover. I'm going to jump up here while we're at it on a couple of things. Uh, I'll show you this first. This is the Basora of Yahusha. Now, <clears throat> Excuse me, it's kind of like another Bible version, but it's from a, a Jewish scholar who basically tried to take the <clears throat> the understanding, the concepts, and the way of thinking of what you might call from a Jewish perspective. And he kind of translated the scripture based on some uh, writings that he has, ancient writings and things. <coughs> I'm sorry. Got a tickle. YRM lessons. This is huge. Uh, got some great resources in here about every question that you could ever ask and when you click on these it'll open up a link offline link as a matter of fact I saved it all so you can look at it offline so you don't run up a bunch of data costs and we'll look at that in a minute so let's go down here and check them out so this is one of those that we were looking at. It's called Gal Galatians Unveiled. Um, it's kind of like for a scribe or an intermediary. It's a stepping stone to the Torah. It's a great resource. Uh, it's uh, Yahuwah Restoration Ministry. They, they say Yahweh. But anyway, it's got some uh, great uh, studies in here about every topic that you could think of. And it's got the scripture scripture references and also it's got the resources down at the bottom uh, about where they get the information so there you go uh, great resource 
to be able to improve things and it's a wonderful wonderful resource as well okay so this right here is actually this little green tree which is the basura of Yahusha but because we don't have a PFD viewer it opens up in Firefox so as you can tell I'm up here and I'm on page 10 in the preface so about the first 40 pages is a preface but it's really invaluable to read because there's some very good information in there and here's a excellent example okay so the primary or ancient paleo hebrew names of yahua and yahusha and then you go down here and it gives a lot of evidence in the next few pages about why and uh, the how and the reason and the things like that but i think primarily the best um, evidence would probably be the way that you say yahuda or Judah, for example, but in the Father's language it's Yahuda. So if you were to take the Dalit, the door, the tent flap, or something like that out of Yahuda, then you have Yahua, which is the Father's name, and they say that Yahuda is the doorway to the Father. So there you go. Um, the Yeshua Yahu, all of those different names that end in Yahu instead of the I A H or Isaiah, it's Yeshua Yahu. So that's a wonderful thing too. Something else I wanted to show you just real quick while we're talking about it is I'm going to go back here and put in page 40. Go down here. And this is huge because it's basically a, uh, I guess you'd call it the table of contents. Now what's really nice about this is you can go in here and you can actually see what we were talking about on some of these names. Okay, for example, Joshua, Ahusha. Okay, and then if we keep on going down, there's Yeshua Yahu, Isaiah, Yeshua Yahu, Yeremi Yahu, see all these Yahoos? Yahuwah. So there you go. But you can also <clears throat> go down and actually get into the scripture, you know. Uh, as you get down here a ways and you get right into there's uh, Yehezkel, Ezekiel, you might say, but uh, there it is, and it's a pretty good resource too. Um, they had this in paperback, uh, the Basora of Yahusha, and uh, the lady that published it made 144,000 copies. Uh, as they got down towards the end, got kind of hard to find, and that paperback was worth like almost five hundred dollars I had several of them I gave them away to people who were struggling with the Bible and all the controversy that uh, inconsistencies that it had and give them a better resource and so there you go that's another wonderful resource nothing like the Torah but a good stepping stone okay so we're gonna close that and I step down here and look at this okay now we're in Google Chrome now this first tab is tremendous and I'll show you where I got it at it's basically up here on studies you click on that Hebrew minds versus Greek minds by Brad Scott okay Brad Scott I don't necessarily go along with everything he says but this basically gives you a uh, somewhat of a, an introduction to the understanding and the differences between, say, the, uh, the way of thinking and the concepts of the concrete and the literal that the Father has for us and the Western abstract philosophical, uh, what you might call um, not real, it's abstract. Okay, concrete is like a rock. If I throw a rock at a window, it's going to break. But if I throw a philosophy at a window, it does nothing. It's got no effect. So there you go. It's a great study. I really like that one. It's a great place to start off and get a good understanding of the way that the Father thinks. This next one is really nice. So basically what you could do is you go, go in here and you could uh, type... Uh, let me backspace that and I'll just put the father's name in real quick. So the Yod, the He, the Wa, and the He. 
Okay, so you type it in there. Uh, let me go down and show you the rest of the letters. They're all there. Okay, so once you get it all typed in, then you just go over here and you copy it. Okay, and then you can go up there and you could paste it in somewhere. So all you people that you know want to put the pro proper spelling or the proper presentation down for the father's name in your Facebook or Google Plus or whatever, there you go. Great resource. Okay, <clears throat> this is kind of like the interlinear scriptures analyzer, but it doesn't have a word search. It's something that you could put on your cell phone and have it with you all the time because basically what it allows you to do is to have a resource with the interlinear right there with you so you could actually go through and uh, share it with friends. Okay, so I'm going to go down here to Zephaniah 3. Okay. Here we go. Sometimes this thing's a little slow, so I don't know if I hit it or not. So if I scroll down here and I go down to about Zephaniah 3 and verse 9, right there. Okay, and there it is. So then I will turn the people, well, Kiyaz Afak. Amim Shifa Brura Lekra Kilim Bashim Yahua Lebodu Shekam Achad. Very, very, very cool. So there's that. Okay, and then when it comes to, uh, you can actually zoom in on that. Let me show you. So you can actually see it better if you're kind of like me and have a hard time seeing that small stuff. So this next one, I've noticed some people, you know, they're getting into the scriptures version of their Bible. Um, it's okay. Uh, it's not really where the Father wants us to be. You know, he wants us to be in his Torah and in the original as best as we can. But as we grow and until we get there, I guess we have to, you know, hang on to our teddy bears and our little fuzzy blankets and our pacifiers and things until we can get to that point where we can understand the Father's language. So I'm kind of offering some stepping stones, you might say, to help you to get there. So basically, this is Bible.com, and then I've got the ISR 98, and that resource is on here as well. And you find it and all those other resources right here under Resources. Okay, so let me close that down. i got one more little couple of quick things I wanted to show you. Well, I say one more. I actually got gobs, but I have to move on. So if I go up here and I go to videos, I wanted to show you this for elementary school kids. You know, um, get the kids started to learning to recognize the uh, the Aleph date, you know, kind of like the father does uh, his his language, and, and you too. So, a cute little video that helps you to be able to learn learn the A B science if you will of the father's language. So, there you go. Now I've got a tutorial here on the interlinear scripture analyzers. Uh, it's not online. It's actually downloaded and installed here. And I did a little test video. Uh, there's a Windows 7 full tutorial. So if you're not familiar with Windows 7, you can actually uh, go in there and kind of learn how to do that. Okay, so and then there's some pictures. I wanted to show this to you really quick. Um, every one of the characters of the father's language has a meaning to it. Some people might call it like a pictograph, um, kind of like uh, the... Egyptian hieroglyphs or something like that. So say for example the Dalit we were talking about earlier this is kind of like the symbol and then it changed into the D and this is the Hebrew version and basically it's a symbol of a tent flap or a door. It means to move a hang or an entrance. And so that's a really good resource to be able to help you to try to uh, see that as well. 
So that's a good resource. There's actually a couple of versions on there. This one's pretty blurry, and I apologize for that, but it does kind of help us to be able to see some of that. This one actually has uh, the ancient Hebrew and the modern Hebrew. Um, there's a better version if you do a Google search and you can save that. Okay, so that's that. Now let's get into a little bit of uh, utilities that we have to be able to keep the system safe and to help you to be able to accomplish the Father's work. We got Windows Defender. It's not the best, but it's absolutely free. I've updated it and put it on here. It's uh, actually active all the time. There's a scan for spyware. If you have a favorite antivirus or anti-malware, for sure, just go ahead and get it and put it on there. Um, Easy BCD2, that is uh, actually this program. I'll probably delete that so it's not on there, but this is our backup program for the dual boot between Linux and Windows. So when you boot up, be ready when you hit the power button to cursor between Linux and Windows. Uh, I believe the default is that it will automatically boot into Linux because that's where you should be doing all your web surfing because Windows is too susceptible and you'll probably have a problem if you go on the internet a lot with Windows because it just opens all kinds of doors to all kinds of problems. But people who are out there with those kind of malware and antiviruses, uh, they aren't really looking for Linux that much, so it's not as much of a risk. So always do your online stuff with Linux and it's got Chrome and it's got uh, Mozilla as well or Firefox so uh, you should be able to do about anything that you did in Windows okay so let's look at a couple of things right here is the screen capture program um, you go through here and you can open it up and you actually hit on that FS capture it has a 30-day trial period and you can buy a license for like 20 bucks or something like that. So that's the bad thing about Windows. It doesn't have a lot of freeware, but Linux is totally free. It's open source and it's fully loaded with all kinds of office software, um, uh, PowerPoint presentations and things like that, uh, Paint Shop Pro kind of a program and all kinds of utilities as well. Uh, burning CDs, making thumb drives, <coughs> and uh, keeping all of your documents, films, videos, and music separate. And also for making a great presentation about the Father's Word by doing a screen capture and uh, uh, editing it and saving it for like a, a PowerPoint presentation or slides where you could do a video and load it up to YouTube or whatever to share it with friends when you come across something really amazing. Okay, so there's that. Uh, VLC is just another media player for playing videos and things like that. And it's just really powerful and very versatile. It goes across a lot of different platforms, and that's why it's on there. And AOME Backup is a great resource to be able to back up uh, uh, different programs, files, partitions, and drives. And it's basically the program that I'm using to be able to save this as my blueprint to be able to upload and uh, to get the software on these other laptops for other people's purposes. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just uh, empty that. I don't have a whole bunch of stuff in there, but I'm just trying to keep everything clean because I'm just about ready to go ahead and get this rolling. Let's take a look at a couple of things in the startup menu. Easy BCD, we talked about all of these stuff. Uh, and if I click on this, uh, we don't have Office software. Okay, and I apologize for that. And I don't really have any um, screen capture software for Windows except that that you can use for 30 days and you'll have to buy a license. So I apologize. And I'm going to be putting out more and more kind of like tutorials on the way to uh, really get uh, great use out of this little laptop. Uh, helpful hints, tricks, and tips to be able to help you get the Father's business, His Word, His power, and His strength out so other people can be strengthened and uh, um, just blessed as well. Okay, so that's about it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close off. Uh, just remember when you 
turn on this computer and uh, the logon and the boot for the Linux machine is Dell and it's all small text like a Dell computer it's D E L L all small text as a user and the password is four zeros and you'll be able to log on to that so uh, I hope this is a blessing to a lot of people I've been really wanting to do this for a long time and uh, to try to use the interlinear scriptures analyzer out there on Android phones and things like that it just doesn't happen it doesn't happen in Linux and it doesn't happen in a lot of this other stuff that we have as far as uh, operating systems and the thing is is it barely works in some of the what you might call the the Windows applications so it doesn't work in all of them you know it's only available in a few of them and Windows 7 is very very stable so we like to use it so I'm going to go ahead and sign off if you have any questions or anything like that you can always find me uh, if you've got this laptop uh, you've got my contact information and you can call me and ask me anything and I'll help you the best I can and if it breaks or gets a virus we can fix that as well so I'm going to log off and appreciate you. Thanks a bunch. Bye.